Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks. We're a YouTube channel on the web at smartwatchticks.com. And I know I left a lot of you guys hanging and frustrated in the last video about the Z6. We just whet your appetite with an Android 7.1.1 smartwatch using a Qualcomm 2100 Wear a uh, CPU chip inside of it with amazing capabilities to open like a clamshell and I didn't go into detail of how you use it or what it does, which we're going to do in this video. Before I get started, I want to bring up the tethering app because it's critical. You got to have two things, a tethering app and a SIM card in the device in order to get it to really even work. So when you go to the Google Play Store or you can use the direct link in the show notes down below, you're going to end up at Emu Watch Phone. When you do, you're going to install it. You're going to go through all the process of setting the app up. And then when you open it, you're going to land on pretty much the first of several tabs across the bottom, which we're going to go into. And you'll have a video call capability, a family group chat, and a uh, voice area for uh, chatting back and forth with the administrator of the watch. Now, let me be clear with you as we begin. This is an adult's watch. It's a uh, adventuring watch to go outdoors. It's seriously waterproof. It um, very bright outdoor screen, uh, solid build, and I am letting you know that this is something that you can use if you're the outdoors adventuring type or you like the design in and of itself and you want a really great communications device that can make and receive phone calls make and uh, receive sim uh, text messages has a audio chat feature that works like a walkie talkie and can be used to transfer pictures you take with this watch over to uh, the adjoining phone via the SIM card or Wi-Fi, it's totally set up to be available on Wi-Fi as well. Um, just an all-in-all -all great communications information sharing watch for adults. Emu, on the other hand, has an entirely different market that they're targeting this for, and that's non-adults. But I'm not going to talk about that. In the United States, um, there's some restrictions around that. So if you're interested in non-adult use, just follow the links I've got for the incredible uh, uh, portfolio, what do I call playlist of videos that are out there to show you the features in action in the non-adult market. But if you're actually looking for this thing uh, for an adult, keep watching because I'm going to go through all of the features from that perspective. I'm laying the foundation because there's a few places where non-adult words appear, like parent. Um, but if you change that to administrator, we're on the same page. Are you with me now? That's why I'm able to do this video. We'll get back to the app, but for now, let's dive into the watch. Real easy to use. You swipe down, you're going to get whatever notifications you've got. Text messages. I got a T-Mobile SIM in the USA. Working fine. Got good signal. So it does work in this country as a watch, it's just not available for purchase. But I do have links in the show notes to take you over to the official store in um, Great Britain, uh, the European Union, uh, Australia, and New Zealand. Uh, there's a pre-launch thing going on right now. You can order it in the currencies of those countries uh, right now, as far as I understand. So that was from swiping down. Swipe to the right and you get the people that you've put in. One of them is going to be the administrator or the parent, the, 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 the head person setting up the watch, the administrator. And then you could have like another co-administrator if that's your thing, or you can put in friends and you can actually restrict this so that only the administrator can enter friends or the individual with this could also add friends. You see the three tabs at the top? This one's the phone. Swipe over and it's the time. Swipe over and you're into the apps. When you swipe up, nothing happens. So you've got down for notifications, left for calling, and everything else is over to this side. You with me? Okay, great. Now, we've got chat. Chat is different than the calls. I come in here to chat. I can do a family chat, which is everybody that's part of the same group, 
okay, the hiking team, uh, the bowling team, whatever you defined as your adult group with this, call it family. Um, you've got a chat for that entire group where everybody sees everybody else's chat. You've got individual chats that you can identify with the administrator for sure and others that are added as friends. And you can create a whole new group or add another individual. If you have permissions, you see that's been disabled, but on the watch it can be and is by default enabled. But I've disabled it so that only Mr. Ticks under Mr. Ticks account in the app on the phone can add. But uh, yeah, I could go into this when we bring the uh, phone over here. We will show you a chat session. Then you can add friends or not. Again, they're locked out. This is the same as what we saw in the chat. You got steps. It's got a basically uh, a pedometer built into it. Wow, I've done all of four steps today. Uh, who liked me? Okay, uh, a rabbit will compete in the step count. Uh, there's stuff going on here. I haven't even seen this. Who liked me? No likes. All right, so you've got that whole social media thing going on as you develop friendship. You got levels. This is interesting. It's kind of a competitive level thing that you can get going and you can earn points. And I'm at level one. It takes 200 points to go higher. Not totally sure what you can do with all that, but I did see you can buy watch faces if you like them uh, for like 40 points um, of that 200 that's needed to get to the next level. Anyway, that's part of what's going on in here. Next level, we've got the album taking pictures and video. We'll come back to that. And then there's an app center. The app center is where you can download a few, not many, but a few extra apps. Once you're tethered to your phone and through your phone tied to Wi-Fi or cellular, you can go in and download these things from the server. There's a daily schedule, stopwatch, a thing called shake to earn more points, and race that you can do with friends, kind of a uh, a competition for exercise, but they're normally marked out on the watch. I do have them turned on, so we'll take a quick look. That's the app center. You get into themes here, and uh, uh, these are otherwise known as the uh, watch faces or wallpapers, they're calling them. And you see for 40, you can, you can earn these things uh, and, and add them. And if you go far enough and say, see all, you can actually get into a grander set of all of these where eventually you get into some free ones. And these are all charged. And if it just says download, you can download that directly to the watch and put that in. So if I like that one, hit download. It's setting it all up. It's bringing it in and I can use it. And now it's become my default watch face, which you'll see when we get out of here. There's the one we just took earlier. Yeah, the one I showed you that we opened this video with is not a stock watch face. It's been added. Okay. Wow, look at this. My wallpapers. That's another feature I was going to show you. We're already in there. Through the phone, you can set up your own custom pictures. And uh, this is a sunspot, folks. Yeah. Pretty darn cool, huh? And you can um, activate it. Let's see. I want to show you. I want to use that one. Could I use it? I hope so. Well, let's come back and see where we're at. Here's this wallpaper. Um, when I get over to it in a minute, I'll show you the custom ones. Let's keep moving through everything here. You got an alarm clock section that you can set up individual alarm clocks. And it goes through that uh, beginning uh, loading phase. You set your time and confirm, and now you got yourself an alarm. Here's some of the things. The race is a game you do with friends. I can't do anything because I don't have any friends. You want to be my friend? I'll race you in Europe. Oh, Australia. Indonesia. Let me get a good Indonesian friend on here. That would be fun. Shake is where I can try to earn points. As I understand it, um, you can shake it something like five times a day. And... Uh, I shook it, and, 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 did I get it? Cow! Okay, just in case when you're out on your adventure and you hear that sound in nature, you don't have to worry about running. It's not a tiger, it's a cow. <sighs> yeah, messages, this is your standard text messages. 
Mr. Tix, look, this is an example of a text message. And uh, I'm, I'm doing it for a long period of time so that I could show you scrolling. And then I put some emojis on it. But guess what? The emojis aren't coming through. Are you seeing some flickering? I am too. I think it's because the brightness is a little low and we're hitting the beat frequency of the camera. It's not flickering in real life. It's just showing up on the screen that way. So don't worry about it. It's a interplay thing, a software thing. So there's your uh, messages. I don't, I don't know why when I scrolled down, I didn't see them up there, but you do have them here. Total storage on this watch is eight gigabytes, folks, of which I got four and a half gigabytes free for a lot of video, a lot of pictures. Unfortunately, I don't think I can put music uh, on here directly and, uh, and use it for playing songs, nor can I Bluetooth it to headphones. It's not a real on Android watch or Galaxy watch or Apple watch. It's a tracker's watch. It's for outdoors location information and communications. Okay. There's your dialing pad, basic information. You put in your number, you can make a call. Um, this is the overall watch settings for display and brightness. Brightness is relatively low. Notice the colors and everything. And if I crank that puppy all the way up, the light bulb is completely washed out, just like your dimming light bulb would at home when you stare right at it at full brightness. Here's the uh, lowest level right there. And now you're seeing that flickering a lot, but it's non-existent in real life. It's just, uh, like I say, the interface with the camera. Um, screen timeout. You have a range down to five seconds, the shortest, and 30 seconds, the longest, uh, for battery con conservation on it. Uh, we've got ringtones and volumes, and they're all kinds of fun stuff. You have a sound mode of either vibrate, ring, ring and vibration, and nothing for off. It will always have some level of communication. So a tracker out there cannot uh, uh, not receive a call and not know it, for example. Um, but you do have volume control here. Uh, that's at the loudest. We'll have to show you some of that. And ringtones, I can show you this on a ringtone. Are you hearing that? Okay. Um, text tone. Hmm. Hmm. Not really loud. But maybe there's separate volumes on those. Anyway, you got basic tone stuff, volume stuff there. And then your flipping settings. This is for when you open this. Do you want it to, when you lift, lift this up, go into a photos mode or get ready to immediately record a video or do nothing when you open it? I got it set for taking photos right now, but I might put it on video. It'd be fun to just kind of click it up, touch the screen, and I'm boom, immediately shooting a really nice high quality eight megapixel camera video on there. Your startup animation can be, you know, a couple of different things. Like actually, I think there's only one uh, that's on here, but you can add them uh, and it's kind of cute. Your startup sound can be none when you open it, which is what I prefer, or you can have a variety of other sounds. Oh, you can hardly hear that. They're little clicky kind of sounds. But like I said, none is my favorite because I don't want people to know I'm opening it. You can also have flip to answer. So if a call is coming through, you just grab it and flip it and uh, that'll answer the call and whether it's video or audio. Well, WLAN is where you set up um, your uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, you can, and I tried to enter my password and everything to lock into the... Uh, the Wi-Fi here without putting in a SIM card or connecting to the watch, and it just didn't work. It wouldn't. Uh, it wouldn't take the password, even though it was correct. So, I ended up having to go through the app, getting the app connected to the watch, and then the app already being on Wi-Fi mapped over the Wi-Fi settings to the watch, which I way way preferred. And you're able to be on Wi-Fi uh, for everything there. Here's a software update, permission management. Um, no apps are in here needing that. Bluetooth you can turn on and off. Your photo mode, now this is fun. Your front camera can be set to a resolution of standard for basic, you know, video chat 
or you can go high definition if you want to see every little nuance of your skin uh, you could do that or if you're shooting over your shoulder or whatever anyway I tend to leave it on this lower setting um, even though it's a 5 megapixel camera if I'm doing chat I, I want the frame rate to be quick and I don't need to shove through a bunch of binary bits um, that slows the frame rate in exchange, you know, for higher quality. The rear camera, however, you can have a standard um, 1280 uh, by 1440 or the full on uh, 2448 by 3264 HD. When I first took pictures that I'll show you in a moment, it was set to standard. I did not have it this way, so I have not shot any pictures in HD. We'll do some of that together. That's the rear camera photo mode. Unlocking settings. I don't have a lock screen, but you are, or you can set it to have no lock screen or a slide to unlock. After a while of not using it, when it turns on, there's a little lock at the bottom. You just slide up and it lets you get into the watch. Otherwise, it's not going to be accessible. And that's there drainage this is wild if the watch is wet you can remove the water remaining in the horn mouth solve this problem of the watch blurry sound causing the remaining water in the horn mouth with this feature i think this is that thing apple came out with a few years ago and got all excited if there's water in here it probably vibrates it and makes the little water break up and and, and roll out so they're really thinking ahead of a very waterproof watch if they're also making sure that you don't have garbled sound in here. About the watch, let's take a close look at this. Okay, the device name is Emu Watch Phone 6. There's the model number, the watch version number. It's running Android 7.1.1 got some Bluetooth and Mac and stuff, and it's got eight gigabytes of um, storage in it and 512 megabytes of RAM. That's kind of light when you're talking Android watches, but I guess it's all you need pretty much for this watch. Um, but it would make it a little challenging to try to upgrade this to a more capable watch, installing Nova Launcher, rooting it. I don't know what the techie folks would do, but uh, theoretically, yeah, this could be anything you want it to be. In the more area, we can turn on international roaming. Uh, it's disabled right now, but of course this watch could work anywhere in the world for anyone from anywhere in the world that has a SIM card compatible installed in it, including international roaming. You can list scrolling tone. So if you're scrolling, it'll make noise apparently. Wallpaper auto updates is enabled and... Uh, yeah, and a Wi-Fi assistant is enabled on here. When Wi-Fi signal is weak, use the data flow automatically. And that is everything to do with the overall watch settings. You have daily schedule. That's one of those um, special apps that you can download, but you don't have to. And you pretty much set it up in the uh, app itself. Then you got a stopwatch. That's another one that is added. One thing about the stopwatch, though, once you leave it, well, it doesn't like clear itself. If you come back into it fairly quickly, you'll see it paused it, but it's not running in the background. You can continue it. There's no lap and you can reset it. So a basic stopwatch. And those are all the functions of the watch. Now let's connect it with the app and show you what else it can do. So here's the app. When we land into the app, we land on the first tab, which is chat. We can make a video call right from here or go into a couple of different chat options from Mr. Tix, the app inside the phone, to Rainbow Gecko, the watch. Or uh, I could make a call directly. I can find location information, a couple of more tabs. What we're going to do, though, here is pretend I'm out in the bout with the watch and I'm hiking somewhere, I got my SIM card in, I sprained my ankle and I need to connect with Mr. Tix. I'm gonna do a video call. Now I'm gonna cover the bottom half of this because when the call goes through, it replaces the bottom third or so with a, a Google map of the location of the device. Pretty darn cool. You got the video chat up above and you know exactly where the watch is from down below. Gonna hit this and I'm gonna initiate a video call. Now, watch this carefully. I'm gonna cover the speaker here also, and I've turned that one all the way down. You see my picture on there, and we know that's coming from the watch. 
right? Because I'm covering it here. So now I'm going to take a moment and answer this. Now we're answered. Um, I removed it and pushed the answer button. And now on the watch itself, you're seeing in the little square at the top, that's my picture from the watch. And this is the picture coming from the phone. Okay, so we've got the two things happening, and we've got plenty loud. Plenty loud. Plenty loud. Plenty loud. Plenty loud. Plenty loud. So loud I'll get feedback looping if I don't cover the speaker. Crystal clear picture, everything is working fine. But wait, there's another uh, camera in this one. And you notice here, you can actually look at the environment, it says. And so from the phone, you can tap that button and have it change and look at the other camera. But I have to lift this up to show you that. And this is all messy in here. So I'm going to take a moment and walk this outside and set it up. And then we'll come back and play with that feature. Hi again, I am back. This is me, and this is what you'd be seeing on the uh, watch out there. And it's looking back this direction. I'm going to tap the button, and it just now flipped. It's picking up the camera. Okay, and it's looking the other way. So this is the forward-facing 8-megapixel camera view, and flipping it around is the 5 megapixel forward facing view but as you saw earlier we can scale both of those down for chat capability you notice this isn't as sharp in the detail because um it is small resolution it's not the full 5 megapixel but this camera i have set to the uh, 8 megapixel and it's pretty darn sharp and i can tell i need to refinish the uh, railing a little bit there i can also switch to an audio call and when i do I'm on an audio phone call back and forth, and there's no way I've seen to be able to switch it back to video. So once you go audio, you're on audio. And that's calling. My, how time flies. Well, we are having fun. All right, back to the chat tab. Once again, you can initiate a video call here. When you do, you get a chance to prep yourself because you're seeing yourself here. And you can do the same on uh, this one because you're seeing your image there. They flip after you answer the call. Don't want to answer? Just reject it. It'll pop right back out of there. Let's get into the chat. I'm going to do a direct chat to Rainbow Gecko from here. I come into a blank screen. I can hold this down to talk. Hello, Rainbow Gecko. Are you there? Let it go. Give it a moment. I get a notification over here. Come in. Touch it. Hello, Rainbow Gecko. Are you there? And it works fine. I'm here. Glad you called. I sprained my ankle. I'm here. Glad you called. I sprained my ankle. Uh-oh. That warrants an emoji. What? Hmm. Urgh. Mmm, they're popping through live over here. You notice that? Yeah, yeah. And of course, I can reply using an emoji. Whee! And it pops up over here. So you've got all that going for you. And you can come over here. You could take photos, take videos, or go into your album. And in my album, I got some pictures that I took. Here's an outdoor one. I'm going to take that one and send it. And... It takes a few moments because it's a picture after all. A few more pixels pops up over here after it transfers. Now, I remind you, everything you're seeing right now is on Wi-Fi. Both of these are on Wi-Fi, so it's really, really fast. If you're out in the wild, it's going to be slower. But check it out, the resolution that I've got. And this was not with the high resolution uh, camera mode. This was low resolution with the forward facing camera, just to give you an idea. It'd be much crisper if I used the 8 uh, megapixel uh, camera. So you got that. I've got voice changer that I can put in here. Yeah, I don't feel good at all. Can you help me out here? Send that. I don't know if you can hear it, but it sounded interesting, like odd. Let's let it come through here, and then you can hear it on this one. Takes a little while to process that as well. 
And here we go. Yeah, I don't feel good at all. Can you help me out here? So, for the outdoor adventurer, having fun, you've got a lot of little goodies that you can do, from pictures to emojis, a limited set, and uh, voice changing, or most likely you'll just be using that walkie-talkie direct chat capability, and just like a regular text message, but it's voice, it'll sit there and wait until the other person has a chance to uh, listen to it, as opposed to the video calling or regular calling, which is real time. And that's this first tab. Now here's the second tab. It's covering the actual street address it shows where you're located, but it does give you the full-on Google map in the satellite or the regular version with a nice selection of options, and you can put on or leave off the zoom in, zoom out capability. It also shows you the battery level of the watch, which is really, really good if it looks like the battery may be running out and this person's stuck in the wilderness and we got to get help to them soon and be able to figure out where they're located before it just dies. So a lot of good information on that second tab. The center tab now actually switches you to your internal phone app and lets you make a selection of video call or voice call or whatever and shows you the big phone number of uh, your particular watch right there. So it bails you out of this app and over to the phone app. The notifications tab now gives you basically a history of all the things that have been done. Uh, here's Mr. Ticks configuring this as admin and any one of them that you don't want, you can just tab and copy it or delete it or do whatever. Uh, that leads us then to more. And more is where you can set all your stuff up, your parameters, uh, shows you your points and your steps for the day. Um, you can do the firmware update, bring in new members, the contacts for um, the uh, administrator of the phone, <laughs> your overall app center. And this shows you the apps that are available for download. And I presume there's going to be more coming. But for right now, we only have these four, but you've already seen them. They are installed. Uh, app management. Here's your photo wallpaper. And this is where you can create your own wallpapers. And I'll show you that at the very end uh, from pictures that are in your uh, catalog. But the time stays in the same place. You got this special class mode, which basically deactivates the watch during certain periods. So you can't use it for anything but time. Uh, security, scheduling power on and off, traveling abroad, watch settings, on and on and on, binding and unbinding this watch. And you can even transfer everything, including schedules and alarms and whatnot, from this watch to another watch if you want to through just using the, uh, the binding code that you scan uh, from one to another and migrate it all over there. So if you want to get a second or a third watch, you can do that. And that's pretty much the app. That's, let's look at those wallpapers. Man, one o'clock already. Okay, we're moving fast. Uh, I'm going to press and hold and I get in here. And of course, you've got the ones that you've, uh, you've downloaded from the server. And then you've got your special ones that you've created. And then you've got the stock ones. And I'll show you some of these. Um, that's kind of the basic one that comes with the watch. And there's a few more that are automatically installed. There's this one here. Although that looks awful familiar, doesn't it? Another one. Uh, another, oh, no, you know what? It put it back at the very beginning when I went through. All right, well, just look at these. Here's a, here's a nice analog one if you want. You got interesting complementary colors going on. And again, you've got quite a few you can download from the other location. It always takes the newest one to the front. Here's where you set up to make your own wallpapers. And they can look like this. There's a nice uh, fish swimming on uh, my phone screen, actually. Touch it, and you can switch to another picture. This is a flower in the neighborhood. There's a galaxy out in space. These are all downloaded uh, pictures from the internet. That's a local picture taken with this watch, actually. And there's a real rainbow gecko. That's the namesake for the watch. Can you see that guy? Amazing. Can we expand it? No, not really. Double tap it? No, that just switches to another one. So you got a couple of collections of those, anything you want in there, and a variety of them that you can set up. So let's finish out with some video recording. 
I have the watch on my arm. I'm using that front-facing camera in low-resolution mode to create this little segment. And now from the high-resolution 8-megapixel camera, we can capture video as well. All in all, really fancy recording system on this wonderful Z6. It's the dual camera video call Z6. You've seen it, guys. It's not available except in a few select countries. We're talking European Union, uh, Great Britain, England area. We're talking Indonesia, I'm sure, and Australia, New Zealand. As far as pictures go, here are some examples of that front-facing 8-megapixel camera. It's just beautiful, really, really nice. Uh, everything in focus, it does a great job. These are pictures taken from the watch and then sent over using the chat directly to the phone, literally from anywhere in the world. Nice camera, nice opportunity for adventurers, for the outdoors at heart, and whoo, for rainbow lizards. <laughs> well, thank you guys for watching, and I hope this satisfies a lot of your curiosity, and we'll see you back here again soon. Got a lot more coming.